started building this week's project. Basically what we're going to be using is a 10K potentiometer and we're going to be able to turn this and control a servo. Using servos can be tricky but not with an Arduino. Again, I'm using an Arduino Due Milanove and a ProtoShield. Both of these are available in the maker shed. So let's go ahead and get started with the build. Okay, the first thing you need is a 10K potentiometer. Usually they're labeled somewhere on it. This one's labeled back here. A lot of times they're labeled on the metal or even on the top. Potentiometers have three pins. The outer two pins, uh, one is going to be connected to 5 volts, the other one is connected to ground. The middle pin is going to be connected to analog pin 0 on the Arduino. Basically what a potentiometer is is a variable resistor. We can vary the voltage through uh, the, the middle pin and the Arduino can translate that into a series of digital signals to control the servo. So let's go ahead and hook that up. I'm going to push it into the breadboard and connect the top pin here to the 5 volt. And 5 volt can be found right here on the Arduino. Um, and if you have the Proto Shield, there's also a 5 volt rail down on the bottom. So I just like to connect it there. The next one we're going to connect is the middle pin. That's connected to the sweeper on the potentiometer, and that's what we're going to read. And we're going to connect that to pin 0 on the Arduino, which is down here. And the last one we need to connect is the ground, and that is this pin right here. So remember, all these holes on the breadboard, these rails, are connected together horizontally, not vertically. So we can actually connect this one by plugging a ground in here, and there's conveniently a ground pin right there. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's it. Positive 5 volts, signal to pin 0, analog, not the digital 0 over here, and the ground wire. Done. Now let's hook up the servo. The servo is just as easy to hook up. It's very similar to a potentiometer. You have a red wire, positive, black wire, negative, or ground, and you have the yellow, which is going to be a signal. This wire might also be white, and then I've even seen orange, but um, most of the time they are yellow. I took a little header connector and I used pliers like this and I scooted down the plastic because a lot of times they're offset a little bit and what that enables me to do is just plug it into the servo and now I can plug it into a breadboard. You can also just use little scraps of wire. So we're going to plug that into the breadboard right there and I'm going to get this wire out of the way. Okay, now same thing, we're going to connect the black line of the servo to the ground and there's a ground rail right here on the Arduino Proto Shield, so that makes it really easy. Then we're going to connect the red wire coming from the servo into a 5 volt. Again, on the Proto Shield we have 5 volts, if you're using just a regular breadboard just connect, connect it uh, to the appropriate pin on the Arduino. And the last one we need to connect is the yellow to a signal. Now we need that one to be connected to a digital pin. So we're going to use pin 9 over here because that's the pin that's used in the example that comes with the Arduino software. Um, and that's it. We're done. Let's uh, give it a test and go over the software. One last thing to note. Uh, potentiometers, you don't need a knob on top, but you can pick these things up really cheap, like literally under a dollar. Um, I have this one laying around my studio, so I think I'll put it on there. And they have just a little set screw on the side. You can just screw them on, and it just makes it look cooler. So I cheated, and I uploaded the code to the board already. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a real quick try. I have a battery backpack here. I'm going to plug it into the Arduino and turn it on and see how it works. And that's just by downloading the example sketch, which you can find in File, Sketchbook, Examples, Library, 
servo knob and I'm gonna go over that in the next step but it works great and you know this has a lot of potential uses I mean imagine putting a camera there or having pan and tilt or using it to steer a robot you can do this wirelessly um, it really has a lot of possibilities you can even make these servos continuous rotation and this could be the speed a lot of cool things okay so let's quickly go over the software um, the first thing to notice here in the program is you have the pound symbol include servo.h. What's really cool about the Arduino and what makes it really powerful are the libraries. And this is the servo library. This allows you to talk with the servo and control it really, really easily. We're going to go in depth on that on a later date. Um, for now, just know what it is and know what it does. Um, when you have a servo library, you need to define... Uh, a few things. So this is servo my servo. So you're creating um, an instance of your servo called my servo. The next one, int pop pin equals zero. What that's again, we've gone over this before. It's creating an instance of the pop pin, um, and it's going to be zero. Which, when we look later in the code, that really means that the 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 analog pin zero is actually your potentiometer pin. The next one is a value that's going to store the variable that we're going to read from that analog pin. Okay, here's the void setup. Um, all you need is the my servo attach nine, and again that relates to the servo library. We're going to go over that in more detail later, but for now just know that you you need to include that. Um, there's a lot more information on Arduino.cc. That just means that you're attaching the signal wire of the servo to pin nine. And then here are here's the guts of the program, the void loop. First one is value equal analog read, kind of like analog write um, that we've used in earlier how-tos. Pop pin, and the pop pin is zero. So we're saying this value equals the analog value of pin zero. Pretty simple. Um, and that's going to be between zero and 1023. So there's 1,000. 24 steps in total because zero is one of them. Um, the next one says that val equals, and this is using um, a function called map, and map is really cool. What map does is you can take um, a series of numbers and convert them to another series of numbers or a range of numbers is probably a better way to say that. What it says is that map value, which we know already is the analog reading, and the minimum analog reading is zero, and the maximum is 1023. And we want to map that to the, the range between zero and 179. And the reason being is that is the numbers that we use for controlling a servo, and, and that's zero is you know all the way, I believe, left, and 179 would be all the way right. Servos vary slightly in what and how much range they have. Generally, it's about 180 or more degrees. Okay, next one. My servo, write the value. So we're writing that new uh, value that we generated through the map uh, program there. And then delay 15. Um, that just gives it a little bit of delay for the servo to catch up. And it just keeps doing that. This little program is a great example of why so many people love the Arduino. It's the first time we use the library. Um, we use the servo library, and it makes controlling a servo as easy as going my servo write value. And the value is the analog uh, data that we collected from the potentiometer. It's so easy. You don't need to be an electrical engineer or have a computer science degree to control a servo. And controlling a servo can be pretty tricky. Um, this is just one example of why the Arduino is so cool. And we'll have a lot more in the future.